What is up? I am back for another episode of Content Bites. Got the coffee. I actually don't have the notes. I'm going to go get them right now. There we go. Got the notes. Got the coffee. And we are ready to roll. Ooh, we got our guest. She's already here, guys. And today, we ha we're going to have a really awesome conversation. So I'm going to bring her in, and we're going to get this started. Let's see. Bam. There we go. Sarah. All right. I'm so excited for this. I'm excited. I, I don't know her story, her full background, so it's going to be a surprise for everybody here. It's going to be absolutely amazing. I do know what she does, a little bit of what she does, so that's going to be super exciting, too. And I just can't wait. I just had a two-minute conversation with her before jumping in here. And we are so excited to have her over. We got to, oh, what's <laughs> up, Sarah? How are you doing? How are you? I'm doing good. Pretty, pretty good. Welcome to Content Bites. We're so excited to have you here. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, this no, is, this, yeah this, what is it? Oh, uh, this is my first time doing an Instagram live. So there we go. <laughs> I'm, that, I'm that, thank you. That that makes us feel so much so special. Appreciate it. <laughs> so, Sarah, for those that are listening and for those that are, are going to listen right here in a, in a few minutes, what is your story? Right? Like, who is Sarah? What do you do now? And how do you get there? Well, let's see. I started my entrepreneurial journey over a decade ago. Wow. And yeah, and um, I started with a photography business, and I realized that while I love taking pictures of animals and architecture and landscapes, I didn't really like taking pictures of photo, uh, or excuse me, of people, which is where the money's at. I was doing weddings and portraits, but even bigger was that it was so expensive to maintain equipment and lighting and uh, mm. software and all that, and so... I decided to to start an online business or, or see what different options there were. Um, nice. for, yeah, so I did everything like drop shipping, affiliate marketing, blogging, all of that stuff. Yeah. And I think I finally landed on podcasting. That's, that's what I'm going to stick with. Um, of course, I do a little bit of affiliate marketing through my podcast and blog of and whatnot. Course. But I just, I love podcasting and the connections you can make. And, and it's almost sometimes like a one-on-one -on -one free consultation with, Absolutely. <laughs> with different people. And just, I love interviewing people and getting, I, I don't know. And I feel like podcasting is going to continue to, I think just during COVID, like the number of podcasts have doubled. I think it's gone from like 700,000 to 1.4 million or something yeah it, yeah so it it's really taking off and everybody knows what a podcast is now whereas even one or two years ago not everybody did and yeah that's true yeah i just love it <laughs> that's awesome you know like just so you know if you see me staring down here is because i got my my notes going on you know taking <laughs> notes of what you're saying and i love because like actually photography was one of my entry points as well you know i you know it well first my first business was like a t-shirt company but after that once i got involved into the digital world we started taking pictures to get into like restaurants and stuff and i i, I think i did enjoy a lot learning about the camera and i started you know helping other people at weddings, going to events just to film, just to take pictures. So I relate to that. It, that that's something definitely exciting. And coincidentally, our journey, my brother and I, now we're doing podcasting as well. So I think that's pretty cool. And what you're, what you're saying is 100% true. It is, you know, it is growing massively. Almost, you know, like so many people listen to podcasts right now and they want to learn you know, never before we have access to, you know, these incredible people that we can listen to them and it feels like a one-on-one -on -one conversation in your car with them, right? And from the perspective of the creator ourselves, you know, like you said, it's like a one-on-one -on -one consultation. Like, when in the world would we be able to get, you know, Todd Brown, Steve Larson, all these people 
to come into your podcast for an hour and talk with you, have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. If, if they'll be in the consulting world, that would be thousands, right? That we mm -hmm. would have to spend to, to talk to them. And they are willing to come to your podcast to share the message, help out your audience. So I agree 100%. I think that is absolutely amazing. So now, Sarah, you know, you, you tell here that you help people start online business on a budget, right? And I'm curious about that. How do you how how do you get to that point? Like, what is it that inspire you to get that that niche? Mm -hmm. Well, um, so yeah, when I was deciding to to go online, um, you know, I was searching different tools and resources to. Well, first of all, what kind of online business? So I tried a bunch of different things, um, but then how do I manage that business? on a budget mm. and so I, I just discovered all these tools and resources that were free or really affordable and i i don't know have you heard of dave ramsey yeah yeah definitely and, oh and okay. entrepreneur leadership right Entre, yeah. Entre leadership. Entre leadership. something like yeah. that <laughs> <laughs> and he also has this um class called um oh it's escaping me now financial peace and so i was yeah. I was sitting in that class. Uh, it's a six week class, I believe, or maybe it's nine weeks and thinking, okay, all these ideas for how to save money, pay off debt and all that. That's great. But what about making more money to, yeah. to help with that? And the, the word frugalpreneur came to my mind and I was like, Hmm, I could write a book about the different ways to have an online business and how to, yeah manage them on a budget and and then I started writing that book and then I was like I should start a podcast to coincide with the book and the plan was just for it to be a temporary thing um, yeah. but I ended up liking podcasting more than <laughs> really anything and yeah. was getting more traction and leverage with the podcast than the book and so I was like okay the podcasting is what I'm going to do I'm going to stick with that and see how that evolves over time <laughs> yeah you know like I think it is it's interesting that you started publishing as a book right and we talk a lot about being consistent I'll say the book is probably one of the most difficult ones to accomplish just because to see the fruits of it right like it takes a long time for example uh we can create a quick social media post right and we can put it out there And immediately we can kind of see a little bit of the reward or at least the reward of seeing it out there as published, right? So I find super interesting that you decided to dive in headfirst with a book. But the cool thing is like then you decided to do a podcast, which has, you know, allowed you to stay consistent throughout the time, right? Like I think you have, what, 50 episodes in your podcast? Uh, I think like 55-ish. Uh, yeah. Uh Yeah, I mean, that is, that's incredible. You know, I, I, I think I heard like not many people do more than what is it like 14 episodes, something like that. Most people quit before 14 episodes, which is impressive, right? The fact that you have st stuck with it for so long and, you know, or, or our main podcast is called Content is Profit. And the whole thing is consistency. At the end of the day, consistency is authority, right? And you need to be in fr getting in front of people, right? Day and night, being consistent, so they know who you are and what you do. And the only way to do that is, is just publishing, putting yourself out there. So, you know, that, that's exciting. So tell me a little bit more about, you know, helping people on a shoestring budget, right? Like, because I think your number is like 100%, uh, 100, $100. Mm -hmm. And it, it kind of reminds me of this book called the hundred dollar startup right I yes yeah so what what is that all about because a lot of people you know that might be interested on in starting a business they're like ah oh, but it might be a little bit expensive you know all these expenses that i might get and i might be in a little tight situation what would you tell them right how what, how would you guide them to start their 100 dollar business if you want to put it that way Yeah, it's funny you mentioned that book uh, by Chris Gillibo. I actually have all his books. Um, mm -hmm. uh, my original thought was to call my book The $100 Startup. And that's how I discovered him. Because when I was researching, like, what 
to title my book. I was like, oops, that's already taken. And then I went down that rabbit hole and got all his books. But um, so my book is Frugalpreneur, How to Launch, Manage, and Market an Online Business for Under $100 a Month. And I mean, the first step is to figure out what kind of online business you want. And you might not get it right the first time. You might want to try a bunch of different things and just see what, yeah. what you like and what sticks, like with you know, drop shipping, affiliate marketing, blogging, podcasting, uh, consulting, coaching, you know, there's so many options, a t-shirt company, like you mentioned, I had, I've done that too. (laughs) And, um, and so, uh, but once you figure out and establish what business, then I think you first need to get a website, obviously, uh, which you can start for free with WordPress um, and start an email list because a website and email list, you actually own those versus a lot of people, they'll start a Facebook page and, you know, it's good to do that, but don't let that be your only thing. Cause that's like rented space. Basically, you never know if Facebook's going to be around in a decade or how their algorithms will change to where you're not even showing up to people and whatnot. So yeah, definitely have a website, uh, an email list, some kind of lead magnet where you can yeah attract people to join your email list um and for an email list for content creators i would recommend send fox it's actually free i love um, no kagan yeah yes <laughs> yeah from AppSumo. and what i love about that is so if you have a blog a podcast a youtube channel you can set up like the link or or your rss feed and on Sinfox, and then it will automatically generate weekly newsletters and emails. Uh, p- it'll pull in your RSS. So, so it'll do it automatically for you. So yeah. you don't have to go in there, but re- like the content that you're created, this API is going to go, it's going to grab all that information, it's going to create the newsletter for you. Is that how it works? Yeah, it's awesome. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. I did a whole episode just on that because I was so blown away and it's free actually. Yeah. So, uh, but if you're not a content creator, then, I mean, you could still use Sinfox, but um, I would recommend Mailer Light, and that's also free up to like, I think one or 2000 subscribers and, you know, you can create landing pages and all kinds of stuff with them. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and then you could create a logo in Canva or get someone on Fiverr for five bucks to create it. And I mean, so you could start an online business for like, I mean, five bucks, really. Yeah. Yeah, no, true. So, you know, like we often talk about friction, right? Like, cause I, I'm going to be 100% honest, right? I was at that point. That's in part why I brought, I bought the book, the $100 startup, right? I was like, I'm on a budget. I need to start something. I need some guidance. But at the same time, for me personally, there was a lot of friction, right? Like I didn't know how to build a website. So then I had to learn, right? So I had to add a bunch of stuff. I didn't know how to do certain other things, right? Uh, I had to learn ads, lead magnets, right? Like there's a lot of elements that start coming into it and you start thinking to yourself, wow, do I need to do this all myself? Do I need to learn all this right like what would be your recommendation for people that might feeling a little you know uh maybe frustrated or they they might feel a little bit overwhelmed with everything you know the bigger picture that they might see and that it might look like a lot what would be your your recommendation to them oh let's see i mean i see you're wearing well you have it turned around now but i think that's a click funnels hat yeah (laughs) yeah uh you could get started with something like that or kartra i really like kartra um you could actually run your entire online business with one of those two platforms Mm -hmm. uh and create you know lead magnets and funnels and landing pages and all of that and so that might be less stressful than you know using a wordpress website um If you do go the WordPress route, I would recommend using Optimize Press, which you can create landing pages and sales funnels with. Um, 
and and there's several others um thrive themes they you know there's oh, different yeah. builders out there yeah thrive architect um and so it, it it makes it simple enough as far as wordpress websites go but i know that it, it can be overwhelming um mm-hmm. to get everything to kind of talk to each other and all the apis and the and then you have to continually like update the plugins and stuff breaks yeah it, it, it can get very technical really quickly right right so if you have some knowledge in that or have the time to mess around with it then that would be the most affordable way to go because i think optimized press is uh 199 for a whole year yeah Where, whereas like click funnels and Kartra, that's like 97 99 a month yeah. so so what i'm hearing here is you know kind of like and we talk about this is called the the resources right and the two main resources we get to work with when when we're doing business right when we're trying to grow something is money and time right so if we're talking and correct me if i'm wrong right i would love to hear your opinion on this so if we're talking about starting a business with you know a hundred dollars uh you know the start again one hundred dollars startup then the main resource that we're going to be spending is our time correct yes definitely if you're on a budget you're going to be spending more time than money and then if you have a bigger budget you're spending more money than time <laughs> that's yeah so like the click funnels cartridge route that would be more money than time because it, it's so simple but if you want to go like wordpress optimized press all of that that would definitely be more time consuming but yeah. more affordable awesome so you know like for those listening right now i want to just paint the the, the picture right here right and i'm gonna paint it through you know my my, my personal journey and when we started, right, our first company was a t-shirt company, right? We actually made these t-shirts ourselves. And when we got it, like it was t-shirts and stickers. And we're like, okay, who's gonna design them? Who's gonna design the stickers, right? We could have, if we would have had, let's say, money resources, we could have find a designer to design all those things and send it to us and we would have saved time, right? Or we could have used that time to maybe sell or do certain other activities in our business. But since we didn't have that resource at the moment, right, we're on a strange budget, uh, we decided to invest our time in learning Adobe, right? Illustrator, mm-hmm. Photoshop, all this, all this stuff to make a simple design that at the end of the day, it was just letters <laughs> typed. So you can tell we didn't learn that much, but <laughs> You know, it, like that that's pretty cool to so for people to understand because you got to be I feel like they need to be honest with themselves on whether, hey, I do have the budget and I'm willing to invest it so that then I can focus in my time in certain other tasks, uh, kind of like leverage other people's times right through your money. And and if you don't is OK, how do I use my time in the best way possible to start my business so i guess I, w- I want to start wrapping up here and use that as you know we usually the people with an action point so for people that are you know in the position of them investing time just time right it's like that's all we have they have 100 bucks and they have a bunch of time to invest in their business what would be the step number one just step number one that they can take today to take a step forward towards their goal. What is that one? Uh, Well, I mean, if they don't know what online business to start, I would recommend my book, Frugalpreneur, uh, because it kind of covers all the different options. Well, probably not all of them, but a lot uh, of options for starting an online business and kind of what each entails and what kind of products and, and resources you would need for each one um and then of course once you figure out where what you want to do you know like i said definitely podcast um excuse me <laughs> well have a podcast yeah might as well yeah i mean <laughs> i i stand 100 percent behind that just because i mean just the fact that you get to meet amazing people just like sarah right here is absolutely amazing <laughs> well thank you um but yeah a, a website email list all of that um 
I mean, there's so many free tools like, you know, like I said, SimFox for emails, uh, King Sumo, also an app Sumo product for giveaways. Uh, oh man, there's just so many. So what would be, so how would, what would you say, right? Like, let's say someone already has a niche, right? They, okay. they already know what they want to do. They, let's say someone wants to be a coach, right? Let's mm -hmm. start that. Put it simple, coach. What would be that step number one? What would be the skill, the number one skill they need to acquire to start growing their business, right? Is it, mm -hmm. is it sales? Is it copy, right? Is it time? Like, what, what would be that one skill, that what thing? that one thing they need to focus on so they can start growing their business? Uh, well, I think one problem that entrepreneurs have is shiny object syndrome and they get sidetracked and they want to start a million different things where they start something and then something else comes to mind. Um, so I would say sticking with what you're doing and, and don't get distracted. And one problem I've had is that I spend so much time learning, uh, whether it's through podcasts, courses, uh, you know, webinars, books, whatever. And then I wasn't implementing what I was learning. And so for every hour I spend learning now, I try to spend another hour implementing. So I would say Love. that, yeah, definitely um, implement what you're learning. <laughs> Education is important, but if you're not implementing it, then what's the point? And then, You know the saying that's like, you should have, uh, let's see, planting a tree 50 years ago. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the best time to plant yeah. a tree was 50 years ago. And the second best time is today. So I think not, at some point you just need to start, you know, because, mm -hmm. and, and you're not going to have it all right and figured out when you first start, but you have to start at some point and figure it out along the way. Yeah. So... Yeah, I, I, I don't all. know. I don't know if that really answers your question. Yeah, no, that's that's a good one. You know, cause <laughs> okay. I, I I love that take on the especially the one on one ratio, right? Because we have a very similar rule with creating content, which is kind of like a golden rule that we we've, we've been saying lately is if you spend one hour creating content, you need to spend one hour promoting the content, right? No, so oh, that too. Yeah. It, it's not just just worth like for example a podcast like. We can spend an hour in a conversation and we post it, but if we don't promote it, nobody's going to watch it. Maybe one, two people will land in the podcast eventually, but we need to promote it, right? So we have that one-on-one -on -one rule as well. So I love how you put it on terms of learning and doing because a lot of people just focus on learning, taking the class, taking the courses, right? Uh, going in groups and, and, and learning from others. And that can give you, I feel like that can give you a false sense of progress right you are because you feel like you're learning in your mind and in your mind it's like i know it i i did it kind of that's how, that's kind of how it feels mm. when you're learning right but you actually need to put it into practice or it's not going to give any results so i love it thank you for that action point i think it's absolutely amazing for those listening one one rule that is one hour learning one hour doing If you decide to go learn for four hours, then you better spend four hours doing after that as well. So thank you so much, Sarah. So for those watching, where can they find you and how can they connect with you? Uh, so the podcast uh, is Frugalpreneur. And then um, you can get my first two books for free at, nice. at thesarahstjohn.com forward slash free. And that's Sarah with an H. And then St. John is S-T-J-O-H-N. Awesome. Hey, I encourage everybody to go listen to her podcast and go get the free ebooks, of course. <laughs> so, Sarah, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Just so you know, I'm going to hang up here. Then I have to write the caption real quick. So Instagram doesn't delete this video. And I'm going to give you a quick call right after that. All right. Okay. Sounds good. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sarah. I really appreciate it. It was an absolute honor to have you on Content Bites. Well, it was an honor to be here. Awesome. All right, guys. That was absolutely amazing. Another episode of Content Bites. There you have it. Pew, 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 pew. And I think we're back maybe tomorrow. Who knows? We, you know what? I, I've, I've been thinking for those that want to participate in Content Lives, I'm going to put my link uh, so you guys can schedule a call on 
my Instagram profile. Just go there, tap it, join content bias conversation. You can schedule one. I'm, I'm trying to have one a day. I think my brother is trying to have one a day as well. So if you guys have a business, if you guys are into content, producing content and want to chat all about it and give out your best tips while at the same time promoting yourself here in our channel, feel free to hit us up and we would love to have you on Content Bites. Guys, thank you so much and I will see you on the next one.